oh yeah 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 you gotta love you have to love you have to love in it um djs in the scene you just do man um you just do the, like maybe it's a maybe it's a, because of this whole uh robin hood thing that's been happening with you know the gme uh the gamestop stocks um the amc stuff and the class divide that you're seeing on social media the complete apathy and sort of disdain some of the elites seem to have for us regular folk trying to make you know um trying to basically take advantage of the system the same way they have been taking advantage of the system for generations um maybe that has basically reminded me of the unfairness of the scene i think right there is a there is an inherent unfairness to the scene that exists that you didn't really that i didn't really think much of prior i guess maybe because i didn't need to think about it or because i kind of tried to gleefully ignore it but the more you look at some of these play grave djs the more that you look at how they kind of conduct themselves online the more you look at how they kind of approach what this thing is and the more that you see that they all operate on the highest echelons and right at the pinnacle and top to top of the scene, the more you start to think to yourself, like, is there really, is the game actually, can the game be played fairly? And can somebody with just, you know, talent and the passion for the scene make it in the same way these guys make it when they rig it in such a way that doesn't allow new voices to come in in any way, shape or form? I don't really think so, but... I'm saying the game is rigged because uh, Business Tesla, right? This amazing, um, what is she? This amazing platform, which has basically been spearheading and at the you know spearheading and highlighting a lot of the inequalities that exist within dance music, sometimes to varying levels of success. But in general, I love the work that they're doing. They essentially highlighted one of my closest pals, Peggy Goo, who decided that it was a good idea to go to Moscow for her birthday and parade the entire journey on a social media page you know considering that we're in a pandemic and you shouldn't be doing any non-essential travel she traveled out there to russia to go meet her friends and have a good time but in order to do so there was also the possibility that she was going to get caught playing music out there and djing right and considering the amount of backlash some of these people have received online for their play graves you just assume they'd be a little bit more careful a little bit more um considerate of the of what's going on in the world and not wanting it to kind of rub it in the faces of people who can't travel the way they do that they're able to do what they want because i don't think anyone is naive enough right we're not dummies right we do know that the cultural elites the people at the top of the food chain are probably just doing exactly what the hell they want during this time right they probably have the ability to maybe ride this um this uh spell and years of inactivity out more than you and i can they probably have more uh financial buffers more opportunity to do stuff during the lockdown you know we're aware that this exists but what you don't want i think especially looking at what's happening with the whole robin hood stuff you don't want to be you don't want it to be like pushed in your face you don't want to be like um what um dave portnoy said in the video you don't want him to stick a gun in your mouth and then rob you you kind of want him to rob you without you realizing it right you kind of want her to go to russia and do what she's doing without you even knowing but the fact that it gets kind of pushed in your face as a constant reminder it's like haha look at what i can do look what you can't do and the fact that she also operates alongside other people in the scene who are kind of in that same sort of little clique who also kind of face no real consequences for their actions who kind of are allowed to kind of do exactly what they want it's just a very stark reminder as to how unfair the whole thing is, isn't it and the reason why i say this is because i remember one time i was covering it look at this label that um mrs peggy who is signed to liaison artist right liaison artist she signed to it and look at the roster of people that are on the same label that she signed to and this might explain why a lot of these playgraves aren't being picked up or covered by some of the biggest dance music publications like mix mag like dj mag like resident advisor like crack to a certain extent none of these places are covering this stuff because all of these people right eats everything adam bayer uh, arm anna anna schneider rod had kink uh, Kim and Foxman, Etap, Kyle. There's so many people here who are plugged in 
to um, various different publications who have various different relationships. Look, Solomon, who I featured the other day on the podcast here, Shanti Celeste, Steffi, who I think had some other words to say about the whole thing. So I'll kind of apply her, Masterplex, Hi. There's so many different people here who have played Playgraves, right? Some haven't and some have done stuff a little bit underhand that it makes you understand like how rigged the system is because these very same people are only being afforded the the kind of opportunity to sort of quote unquote fly to the radar because they're lined up and married up to this you know this agency but luckily business of techno was able to kind of expose the hypocrisy of the whole situation with this little um slideshow of basically peggy goo uploading images on instagram if you're listening to a podcast essentially her um stood in front of some building in moscow um with a young lady posing looking pretty and cute it's a slideshow the picture two picture three and then for some reason the picture number four was either edited or purposely left to be blank with maybe the assumption that oh this is us being cheeky and being naughty and not telling everyone what we're actually doing but then if you continue to the further post that's linked in the thread um business techno links some screenshots of people's comments on the actual post itself where it says hey peggy Goo, are you from russia or do you have a gig there obviously kind of in uh suggesting that she shouldn't be in russia if she's not actually from there because you're traveling from another place you may be carrying covid there another person says interesting how some people carry on life as normal especially in a place that is suffering immensely innocent civilians have been beaten up and thrown into jail for exercising their right protesting very disappointing and it's uh, ignorant of you Peggy you to not use your platform to shed more light on what is actually happening in Moscow besides your pretty restaurant trips free Navali and this is very interesting because I hadn't noticed that this trip might have coincided with uh, Alexei Navali being taken into custody right unlawfully uh, by Vladimir Putin for basically being a dissenting voice um you know basically highlighting the inequalities that exist in russia and at that very same time that these people were gallivanting around twisting and turning and throwing their hands in the air people in the streets of moscow were being beaten right like we see videos of like 50 year old women like with broken bones being pushed on the floor a 10 year old kids being arrested people being thrown in jail for like 18 months plus for just exercising the democratic right of protesting and these people were raving and just kind of not having any care in the world it's really really funny to be fair if you think about it it's so 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 detached from reality um the next screenshot says peggy hi when the performance in moscow she said yeah really soon hope so the next slide um what's happened to the photo number four she said yeah i don't know what happened annoying right and this is funny too because this is the same person that i said before which is why daniel wang is probably one of the most you know ineffective call out people in the world because this isn't as if like peggy goo is the most liked person ever right she's probably another person that maybe illustrates and represents you know the inequalities and privilege that do exist for certain people i'm sure certain artists will probably feel as if like her success is somewhat undeserving her journey has been somewhat um inocular insulated from the realities of the world you would say that's probably a fair assumption to put out there it's not a judgment it just is what it is so it's interesting that someone like him daniel wang who's got a storied history in the scene somebody who's very respected still didn't find a way to properly stick it on her without him coming out like the absolute donut right so that was a really funny thing and not only a few weeks later after this whole episode where people were maybe having some sympathy for her she decided to put herself in such an uncompromising position and what is so weird about this is that again i'm a sensible reasonable kind of dude i know these people are probably partying and doing what they want to do it is what it is i don't expect them to be living the lives that you and i are doing and basically abiding by the rules and acting like losers right they i know that they're, they're pushing the line and chain and kind of you know taking advantage of everything that they can because i have friends in my own social group who are doing the same thing so you can just imagine somebody who has the means to kind of you know exercise that rebel that rebellion is in them a little bit more and has a bit of clout and fame you can just imagine what they're going to do so i'm understanding of it but surely there's a way to do this without um attracting the scorn and the hatred of people online without it making you seem like you're lacking in self-awareness and you're completely detached from reality surely there's a way of doing it right and that would just require you to do what not post about it right if you just went on holiday with your friends to celebrate your birthday and you didn't post anything 
and you went to go and perform and play in front of your group of friends and you didn't post anything, no one would know. There might be some intimation. You might be leaked a picture. Maybe a pap might get you. Maybe a random person might see you from afar. But if you made the concentrated effort to ensure that you don't document any of your birthday escapades or share them on social media, no one will be none the wiser. But the one thing that they can't seem to let go of is the one thing that's also bringing them the most amount of social media scorn. Now, don't get me wrong. These people don't give a shit, right? I'm sure they don't. I think the fact that they're doing this, I think, shows that they like the negative attention. They like attention regardless if it's negative or positive. It kind of does and kind of itches and presses that dopamine button that's deep inside their souls. So that's for, that's for sure. But in terms of um, what it does for the perception of the scene, it isn't really that good, is it? Typically, to be completely honest, that somehow the need to party and rave kind of supersedes the safety um, of the countries that you're visiting. And it also inevitably, in a weird way, right, puts out a bad message and basically gives people an excuse to not follow the rules at home themselves. So it's doubly... Uh, it, it, it has a uh, double the the negative yeah the negative consequences are not only isolated or kind of concentrated at your feet they have sort of these weird reverberating effects and if anything as well like i said it just causes more splinters in the scene people already from what you follow certain accounts there's already a lot of scorn and hatred and sort of um envy and anger that gets pointed towards these people in the first place because they all operate within the top five to one percent of djing fees right and touring capabilities and gigs whatever it may be right they're the ones they're the privileged few so there's a lot of hate that comes to them anyway um and if anything, this pandemic has basically proved that all the hate was completely justified because they're the only people for the most part who are playing at such a scale that is drawing this sort of score. And I'm sure there are people that occupy the lower bands of the DJing tiers, the DJing paid group tiers who are also playing but are doing it in a most subtle way. But these people are just so hell bent on sharing everything that they do when it comes to playing, which is why I kind of stress that these people are most probably influencers first and DJs second with their kind of weird heroin like itch to make sure everyone sees everything they're, they're, they're doing um it's inevitably causing them more damage and this is a last slide i guess that's kind of features um from what i can see it looks like it's nina kravitz peggy goo i don't know who the blonde lady is uh partying in this sort of private event they hosted somewhere um everyone looking nice and glamorous and essentially raving and celebrating as hordes of protesters on the outside are being pepper sprayed and stomped to the ground by russian stormtroopers epic and <laughs> And I guess in some weird way, they try to what have some sort of COVID secureness in the actual event by making sure everyone stands as far back from the DJ booth as possible, which is odd. They kind of covered, I guess, all the windows of the auditorium that they were in to make sure no one sees what it looks like on the inside, maybe. I'm not too sure. And again, the party doesn't even look fun. This is the thing that's always kind of bugging me. Like, none of these raves so far, apart from the possession techno raves that happened in Paris, like none of these raves have really really made me feel any kind of sense of fomo right they're full of the same sort of wankers that you see on most of these tech house meme pages on instagram um you know they're most likely people of a of a particular um income bracket and those are usually people that party the worst it's just a very odd 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 situation altogether now let's get this off the screen because i don't know why it's doing that but yeah <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. It's my birthday. I have to DJ. I have to play. Let's fight to Russia <laughs> in the middle of political upheaval. Oh, man. I love it, man. I love it. Nina, of course, Nina never misses an opportunity to go and play somewhere, and it you could you could literally hire Nina to go play inside a volcano and she'll go there and dance 
and play her flipping brand of acid like she will not miss the bag i don't know if she got paid or not but let's just assume that she did nina is always going to collect the bag she will she would legitimately play in flipping guantanamo bay if you played her <laughs> Yeah, man. I don't know. I don't know. Again, like I said, it's um, it's disappointing in some respects because, like I said, it just highlights the inequalities that exist in dance music and basically does show that the game is somewhat rigged. None of these people will face any sort of consequences. They don't get covered in all the big publications. No one points out the hypocrisy of them going to these places and essentially uh, destroying an economy and citizenship in the hopes of playing their sh you know pretty forget forgettable brand of electronic music and in the end nothing really changes for their earning potential right it's not as if this uh, prolonged period of time away from the dance floor has kind of stopped or started any of their ability to go and play in different places so it's not as if these gigs are really amplifying or reminding people of what they do they're always going to get gigs regardless of where they, of how long um we're under any sort of lockdown so this need to go and play in places does that isn't there as somebody else who's probably coming up in the scene and is probably needs these gigs more than they do in that conventional sense but hey i guess you have to do what you have to do during these times it is what it is um i think for us regular folk what it should do is there should be a reminder that when the world does reopen you need to support your local um club promoters your local event promoters your local clubs your local djs producers and do all you can to make sure that you kind of amplify whatever they're doing so that they can also get the same looks that these people are getting and you know essentially kind of feed back into the scene that you're um mostly familiar with or near to um that's the only way the scene is going to change because at the moment the industry has a stranglehold on who gets picked to be the next star who plays where who does this and like i said that liaisons artist group page is full of stacked of people who essentially are able to get away with absolute murder um, not put that much effort into their act or into what they do in general and basically gallivant around the world spreading the virus and essentially taking the piss but hey the future's bright hold on tight we're gonna rave again very very soon